Hello animators, today is a wonderful day for the Minimator community. <laughs> we just got a new update 1.2.6 as well as the first official release of the model bench. I'm going over both of them because you know that's a big thing. And all I'll say before I start is if you like these update videos, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the like on the video because I make update videos as they come out. Now without any further ado, let's take a look at some of the changes in the new update. Edit alignment settings for text objects. Yes, I had no idea we needed this, but we definitely do. For example, if you type in some text uh, in multiple rows, I'm pretty sure under text, you can change the text's alignment left, right. You see what I mean? Edit AA setting for text objects to enable slash disable anti-aliasing on the text fonts. Yes. Say I want to change the font. There you can see it better. It's still a slight change but the AA is now different. Hold on. If I come closer, this is what you can change. This is with anti-aliasing. This is without the anti-aliasing. As I said, it blurs the edges to make it more soft. You can now toggle that setting on and off. Edit support for new model settings and behavior in Modelbench 1.0.0 I'm pretty sure that's this thing. That's it. It's pretty much compatibility with Model Bench. They're basically going to act together as one big software. Not actually, but you know what I mean. And now look at this. Added glow color threshold for blocks that glow by default to determine how bright a pixel needs to be to glow. If I make this a glowstone, which glows by default, and now in graphics here, glowing block brightness and glowing block threshold. In the settings, there is a new option to toggle the threshold of how bright the pixels on the automatically glowing blocks need to be. If you add a torch or a lava block or a glowstone into your animation, it's going to glow by default. So with that logic, hold on, if I add a torch, it's like the entire block would glow. Now you can raise that threshold and have only the actually bright areas of the block glow. That is a pretty cool feature. I'm not gonna lie. I like it so far. So we have improved bending appearance. Ooh, I gotta see that. Mm -hmm. Oh, so that's basically it. Hold on. Is it the realistic slash blocky? I don't really see too much difference whoa <laughs> i didn't know that was a thing <laughs> you can bend it inside himself what if that's meant with the body because like oh oh yeah yeah that's it that's definitely it look at it it's no longer hideous Boys, we did it. Okay, you can obviously kind of glitch the character, I see. Bend wheels have been changed to sliders. Wait, really? Hold on, if I go to body... <laughs> That's not a wheel anymore. That's a slider. What the hell? That threw me off guard. I guess. Okay, we gotta learn to live with it. Updated icons for importing models in the workbench. That's the icon, basically. We also have a few bug fixes. So, fixed crash when not using a resource pack on scenery templates that have special block timelines. I have no idea what that means. Fixed search results in block lists not being accurate. That's probably a good thing. Fixed cloud offset moving all clouds away from scene. I guess that was buggy in the previous versions. I don't know. I haven't experienced these. Fixed 3D planes not bending properly in most scenarios. Yeah. Fixed smooth diorite stairs and slabs, mossy cobblestone and brick walls not importing. Fixed crash when generating scenery with certain blocks. Fixed water generation near waterlogged blocks. Alright, so those are the changes in the new Minimator. It's not too much, but that's because the focus on this update was the model bench and we're going to see that right now. Alright, I've never opened this before. Oh, that feels nice. Okay, let's go for a new model. Wow, that's it. That's the new model bench. Okay, okay, we have a lot of things to go through here. Now, this version is a complete rewrite of the code, having no relation to what issues previous versions may have had. This is entirely new. <laughs> the code is made from scratch, added inherent bend angles for parts, and that also affects the inherent bend timeline setting in my animator. Which means if you have a bunch of elements, that's a the awkward color scheme. There's no pivots here for me to move them. That's kind of weird oh so move tool take tool scale tool okay i get it transform tool but you have all of these transform axes there okay okay i get it i get it sorry if i add the bend bend on x axes how do i where's the bend tool is there a bend tool no where's the bend tool how do, how do i actually bend this upper okay whatever eight i guess custom bend size i guess four how do i make it inherit stuff oh you can actually change the render depth as well on this one making a face rig entirely inside model bench is now technically possible because you have the render depth thing oh yeah added render depth option affects timeline settings in my animator oh 
inherit bent angles. That's it. Oh, you gotta have it bendable on Z and then you can inherit bent angles. If I were to save this model, save it as a test. And now I gotta reopen my animator. Cool. <laughs> okay, so while this is loading, I wanna mention that I have launched a merch store. It's still pretty new, but this time it's legit. I've had merch before, but this is on a new site, Teespring. It's more organized to have the option of double-sided print as well as printing on the sleeves and whatnot. It's pretty cool. Just thought I wanna say, like if you wanna check it out, the link is in the description. Okay, so if I go create, that's a new model, right? And I'm gonna browse with the model. So that's the first one. And the other is inheriting the bend. Bend, it's already ticked on because I did the inherit bend angles. That's it. Edit inflate for shapes. Expand slash contracts corners of a shape by units. Material, that's not it, appearance. Inflate, you can inflate slash deflate. So basically it's, it's like uh, some sort of a scale that always scales from the center up because it's inflating the corners. I'm not sure what that's for. Edit bend option for shapes, enabled by default. Okay, so if I tick this off and import this test to in the animator, so if I bend this one, it's not... Okay, so the shape is not going to bend because it has bend disabled in here. I'm learning as I, as I go. Edit face camera option for shapes, which means face camera. It's always going to face the camera. It kind of looks like a plane. Doesn't even look three-dimensional. No, I'm not a computer expert. Hold on, I'm recording. Edit hover option for shapes. Let's see what that does. Hover. Uh-huh, that means it's going to bounce. So if you want to have an idle animation, imagine a floating talisman above the guy's head, basically. You can turn on hover, and it's always going to bounce like an item, even though it's completely three-dimensional. That's cool. Edit height front and height back options for planes. Mm, I guess I need a plane here. Hide front, hide back. Oh, so that's uh, hiding one of the two. Okay, I get it, I get it. How to make it three-dimensional, though? Extrude, there we go. And if I hide the front and the back, you only get the outline. Okay, I get it. That's cool, that's cool. That's pretty interesting. Cool. Edit locking for parts and shapes. Affects the Minimator timeline. Okay, so I can lock these in place. I just don't know how. Okay, lock. Click the lock icon and now you can't modify it. And this locked part will be locked in Minimator as well. It's it's affecting the timeline, basically. That's that's cool. That's very cool. Default bend angle limit now goes from minus 180 to 180 degrees. <laughs> that's what I've experienced before. Steve compressing his arm. <laughs> oh, wait, there's a preview up here. Wait, what? Render SSAO shadows. Oh, I get it. Okay, so light rotation. I can rotate where the lights are coming from. Light range. That's like the sunlight range. And oh, set so a few previews. How it's gonna look like? Wow. Export. You can export the image as well. That's that's pretty dope. You can make thumbnails with this now. Replace direction option with custom bend range option. I I guess that's this. Oh yeah. There was a direction. If it's going to bend forwards, backwards, or in both directions. Right. You can click the show options to have the default angle, how it's gonna start off. And you can set the range. So it's going to go from minus 11 to 180. That, that's going to be the range. So you can actually limit how it bends and you can also invert the settings. Shapes will now bend smoother based on their parts bend size. The default bend size, that makes it smoother. Oh, so that's the bend size now. Eh, pretty cool. Except the offset is now a bit... Uh... Okay, okay, it's kind of quirky still. If you go for too much, then again, the bottom is going to slide a bit. Cut value. Oh, you can right click to copy paste the values as well. Oh, I spit on my microphone, sorry. This is so cool and organized. I can update my rigs now. Update interface as part of the current rebrand. I've seen, this looks interesting. <laughs> Gotta get used to it first. Interface is set up similar to Minimator, allowing support for panel to be arranged and combined. What? Oh, I can throw these around. All right, that's cool. Uh, edit shape outlines and viewport. Yes, if I click the shape, you can see it outlined in white. Edit right click menu, you'll find most missing options in it. Combine X, Y, Z. So we have one scale, uh, cut value, copy all scale values. If you're in doubt, just right click, you'll find what you need. Darker theme setting. Oh, <laughs> I like this. I really do. The ambient colors, you can make it red, white. <laughs> Out of all things in this video, this is one of the cooler ones. Shape outline opacity. Oh, so the outline is now very opaque. Modeling SSAOs. What's going to display here? You can also turn off the wind. If any of the objects in the project is being affected by wind, you can just turn off the wind here. So you're not going to see it while you're modeling, but you're going to see it as you export it in animation. Edit auto scrolling when group selecting elements near top and bottom, <gasps> add a whole bunch of blocks here. And like you do this, it's going to automatically scroll. Now it's more organized. Now I just gotta get rid of them somehow. How do you delete stuff? 
Oh, you can select it all with shift. You gotta click all of them, not just one. Delete element. You just delete one by one. Damn, you should make it easier for us to delete stuff. Plus, that is one of the quirks I found. Edit FPS setting, we saw that. Edit setting for custom controls. Oh yeah, right, we also saw that. Edit smooth camera setting. Where's that? I didn't see that. Look, says it smooth camera. So that's how it slows down. Okay, so it doesn't ease the motion of the camera. Okay, I get it. I get it. I gotta explore, man. If I wanna know what this is about, I gotta explore. It's my first experience with the software still. Edit blocky bending setting. Saw that. Replaces old pinching. I don't like pinching. Nobody likes pinching. If you like pinching, then you're wrong. <laughs> Edit preview mode allows for previewing your model with proper lighting. Yep. Shapes can now be rearranged in parts. So each shape can now be rearranged under a specific part. It's what I'm getting. But you can still only delete one of them. I don't know how it helps you selecting multiple if you can just delete one. What if I just do this and press delete? No? Backspace? No? Okay then, screw you too. <laughs> Parts will now auto-expand when hovered over when moving elements. Don't know what that's supposed to mean. Okay, I don't understand this part, let's move on. Removed model creation process. Model bench template, me model, blah blah blah, can now be used as a template for a new model. Uh, a lot more file types are supported if you wanna use a template for a model. Removed save prevention. Models will save regardless of errors present. Edit the pivot tool for editing pivot offset of a shape. Okay. Added the scale tool, transform tool. I, we've seen those. Change how snapping works. Now one setting that applies to most values. Okay, I just don't know how to turn on snapping. <laughs> how does snapping work? How do I snap stuff? Yeah, okay, I don't get a bunch of stuff, model properties. Enable tool snapping, right. Ha, that's it, That that's the snapping thing. I was gonna move on already. And now this one will be applied to scale, rotation, and everything pretty much. Edit slow shape generation setting. Helps for editing slow models. Looks cool when you open a model too. So if you have a very advanced model, it's going to generate shapes slower. Like th the software runs faster, I guess, that's what I mean. And apparently it also looks cool. <laughs> Edit refresh textures on focus setting. Useful for editing textures while working on a model. It automatically refreshes the texture of the things you're working on. That's my guess. Also added backup so it backs up your stuff and change UV editor shortcuts to control plus E. If I want to open the UV editor I can just go control E. Okay that's cool. I'm gonna remember that. That's cool. And now a few bug fixes. Fix hierarchy sorting between being offset. If you were to bend something it would kind of go out of place uh, when it comes to hierarchy and bending and stuff like that. Fix crash when editing models that bent. That was very annoying. I need my bending, otherwise I wouldn't choose model bench. Fixed issues related to model loading slash saving found in previous beta versions. Okay, so now it's gonna load and save properly. Fixed warning preventing saving. Fixed 3D planes not bending properly in most scenarios. That was quite a few things we've covered, but one thing I really, really want to try out. I've been wanting to try it out for a while, and that's bendable extrusions. Add 3D plane textures. I'm gonna add a texture. Come on. Oblivion. <laughs> How do I actually edit the UV editor thing? I really- Oh, I gotta select the object. Okay, I got my body here. Add a 3D plane. Just add some extrusion here. Completely random. This is going to be my random extrusion. Don't know why. Bend on X axes. I think it might actually work. Hold on. Offset. Oh, the body part is also moved up. The custom bend size is going to be slightly bigger. I guess 13. So now if you do this. Oh my god. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm not done yet. That's bend on the X. X, bend on the Y. It's sort of funky and it kind of breaks. You can see the triangles forming or whatnot. It sort of breaks if you go for extremes. Hold on, let me just uh, save this. You got this. Bendable extrusions. My mind is blown right now. This actually functions. We have the bendable extrusions. We've all been waiting for this. Look at this. I guess it still breaks if you take a look at it from up close, but if you have something like this, like no one's gonna know. Dudes, I think we have bendable extrusions. It might be able to work better if I didn't uh, crank up all the bend size and stuff too much. You could put it up to two, and that kind of makes it even on all ends. Yeah, but if you increase the steps, it somewhat gets uneven, but it works fine on six. It also works fine on this value, that's eight. And it also works fine on 10. So on every even number, it's going to look better. And then you can just twirl around. This size needs to be an even number, because even numbers tend to work better and not glitch. So if you're going to have bandable extrusions, this needs to be an even number, that's it. 
it, big brain, I cracked the code, that is amazing. And even in my animator, I think it looks way better. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Again, it's not quite the best thing, but it's better than nothing. It's actually quite flexible if you come to think of it. Look at look at the complexity of this shape, and it actually looks pretty nice. You can see some awkward patterns in there, but I don't think it's too bad, especially not if you have a lot of stuff. Some armor or that is closed on all ends, so you can't even tell the edges. You know what? You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna update Oblivion, and I think I'm going to use Model Bench entirely. I like the new updates. I like them. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. We have a new Minimator version with changes to text, banding, the way you can control the threshold of glowing objects. That's amazing. But mostly the model bench and bendable extrusions. I still uh, gotta figure out how to navigate through this whole thing. I don't even know what that does. Guys, the download link for both the new Minimator as well as the model bench will be in the description for you to check out. Now, if you want me to make a tutorial on this newer version of model bench, click the eye in the corner. I will do it when I learn about it myself. I'm gonna need to update my rigs. I can see that now. And you better update yours. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned a thing or two. Be sure to check out the merch store. I'm still quite happy about the whole thing. Now again, thanks for watching. Good luck with the software and stay sharp.